Okay, here's five reasons why I support nuclear energy. Well, I have a wonderful electronic invention I want you to see. see, see. It, it looks something like this. So number one is posterity. I've got two children, many other people have children. We all want there to be a better future for our children. So that's where, where I start. I want a better future for our kids. And as it stands, climate change is making things worse for future generations. Whatever will happen, many people will become displaced if we don't pay attention. If you are worried about immigrants right now, or refugees, immigrants, call them whatever you want. Think about what will happen once crops start failing on a massive scale in Africa, in Asia, Syria and Somalia are going to look like child's play compared to when India runs out of water or when they lose their crops or when Bangladesh runs out of water, which is a strange thing because they're literally at the sea, you know, they're a big river delta. But once they run out of water, drinking water, it's, it's going to be pandemonium. Two, renewables can't do it alone. So here, so here's the thing, you know, when I started out in energy active, I used to be a pro-renewable guy. I'm still a pro-renewable guy. I still think that we should deploy, um, you know, some pretty large quantities of solar, wind and hydro and whatnot. But having calculated everything, it simply is not going to happen. Regardless of what people say, like Mark C. Jacobson or Bill Nye, Mark Ruffalo or whoever, it doesn't matter. It does not matter. All, all the solutions project foreshadows is that Africa, for instance, is not going to grow. They will keep the per capita energy consumption of, of, of Africa straight. In fact, they are expecting some of the countries to go down into per capita energy consumption which is ridiculous, that's never going to happen. Plus, there's now one billion people who are living in some kind of energy poverty. They either don't have enough water, they don't have a great variety of food, they lack essential services like uh, hospitals, you know, for healthcare, uh, dental care, um, they don't have access to products that we have that keep us healthy, um, and all, you know, it's pretty it's pretty hard and if we say no you cannot go you cannot grow you are basically saying well you know what we've achieved our way of life we're fine with that but you, for you it's barred you're not going to get that that's immoral and i'm also confident that nuclear energy can be deployed anywhere on the planet anywhere the only thing that is keeping us from doing that is ourselves and nuclear energy is just a technology. It's just a technology. It's not good or bad. It's, you know, it's neutral. The things we do with nuclear energy makes it good or makes it bad. And as it stands, it has made it better. The world is a better place thanks to nuclear energy. Which brings us to point number three. Versatility. No energy source is as versatile as nuclear energy. None. If you want water, nuclear energy can do it. If you want fuel, nuclear energy can do it. If you want to store energy, nuclear energy can do it. Nuclear energy basically can do it all. It can even make medical isotopes for treating cancer and diagnosing all kinds of terrible illnesses. In fact, none of those medical isotopes would be possible without the nuclear industry. Millions of people are saved each year just because we have medical isotopes which come from the nuclear industry. Number four, low materials footprint. This might seem awkward since nuclear power plants are so big, you know, some of these things are massive. It's like bigger than a pyramid. If you look at an EPR for instance, a 1600 megawatt reactor, which is huge. These things are really, 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 really big. If you look at the mountain of materials that has to be put into building a reactor, and then look at how much energy it produces over the lifespan, it's incredible. It's incredible. The material footprint of nuclear energy fades away against wind energy and solar energy. 
So if you want us to stop extracting so much materials, you have to be in favor for nuclear energy. And the funny part is that many people say, well, we need to keep mining uranium and thorium and whatnot. Yes, that might be true, but volume wise, uranium and thorium are like a speck of dust compared to all the stuff that you need for glass, aluminium, silicon, lithium, you name it. All the stuff that goes into batteries, uh, permanent magnets for wind, windmills, you name it. Those are orders of magnitude bigger than uranium mining or thorium mining. Which brings us to number five. And I already touched upon this earlier, but if we want to make it possible to have rising living standards across the planet, everywhere, in Africa, South America, Asia, Europe, Northern America, have a level playing field of people who have access to, I don't know, somewhere between 25,000 and 50,000 kilowatt hours per year. Nothing is going to happen if we just deploy renewables. It's not going to happen. We need nuclear to solve the energy crisis. The energy crisis is more than just cutting carbon emissions. The energy crisis is making more energy available for about three to four billion people, perhaps even six billion people. All the energy that has been consumed over the period of time the West is like way up there. Of course, right now, non-OECD countries are already consuming more energy than the West does. But that doesn't mean that they have a higher energy prosperity. In fact, it's not the case. They are using less energy per person than we do. And that's not a good thing. It's not because they are very you know, frugal or anything. It's because they don't have access to basic amenities like running water, like sanitation. They don't have a good variety of food, they so, so that, which means that they suffer from malnutrition. They have more illnesses. They have more child deaths. They don't have a store full of toothbrushes and toothpaste and soap and whatnot. You know, we have like Every corner, every every city has at least three or four supermarkets in the West, whereas the supermarkets in Africa or in Asia are mainly concentrated around one or two cities in an entire region. Naturally, they are going to use less energy than the rest of us. Is that a good thing? Not necessarily. I think that's a bad thing. If you want to change that paradigm, you need more energy than ever before and it's not going to happen with solar or wind. Yes, we still need solar and wind. But if you truly want to make a change in these people's lives, you have to drastically improve their energy availability, which means that they are going to need nuclear. We are going to need nuclear to eradicate poverty from the face of this planet. We have to start working together and we have to stop fearing nuclear energy so much. It's irrational. And with that, we reach the end of this video. I want to thank you all very much for supporting my channel, for supporting me. Um, thank you all for watching and have a nice day. Bye-bye.